Guess what, Neil? <laughs> We're back in our political cycle. We are. 2024. Whatever that thing is. March. When is it? March 5th. We got some big stuff going on. Large. Uh, it is. A, we always say it's the political Super Bowl. Gnarly. Yeah. We do. Um, That's the first time I've heard you say that. It's the political Super Bowl. That's when it happens. <laughs> Lonnie Faulkner is with us tonight. Yeah, running for. She, she may well be your next. She may well be TC. Your next supervisor. Well, so you're we're working on it. First off, I don't know who is, but you I know are. she's in the running. Right. We're going to find out more about her tonight, everybody. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in on Santa Cruz Waves. Um, we're glad to have you here. Uh, Tyler Fox, thanks for having us on there as well. And Neil, yep. this is, I feel like we opened this door a couple of weeks ago of having the political Super Bowl 2020. Who did we start with? Manu was here. Manu was here. Who else was here? Uh, well, well, I did a bunch of interviews you know, I do my little who's who in Santa Cruz. Yeah. I did a bunch of interviews in Aptos and Watsonville and a bunch well, of the, the good excuse is our memory sucks because we're old. <laughs> so we don't have to remember. Yeah. Basically, we're I off the, the hook. Basically, it's the, awesome. No idea who yeah, came We're like, ah, who knows? <laughs> you come but it's good that? stuff. You, you ever had this CC? Yeah. People come and say, hey, so I, I loved your show. I came on your show. You go, I came on the show. No, you did? Who the hell no, are you? It happens to me all the time. Well, ten years later, in eight hundred shows, yeah, like, I can't house? remember every one of them. I barely remember yesterday. Gosh, um, Lonnie, welcome to the show. Lonnie Thank Falk you. is in the house. Yes, um, uh, it's great to have you here. You potentially will be my supervisor. So I know this is a a, a, a race. It's a marathon. Um, I. First off, how are you mentally so far? How's the game going? It looks great. Are you, I mean, you, yeah, for sure. She has a Mai Tai down there. Um, <laughs> so, These guys were like pre, pre um, you see that? liquefying she me. She tried, well, keep, she tried to keep that a secret, TCB. Right a, okay, hold on. Uh, first off. Ah! Yeah. Yes. Yes. First oh, off, <laughs> we pre-game, you know, folks. Oh, yeah. You cannot okay. come on the yeah. outfit radio There's show. Mai tai. You cannot come on the yeah, outfit okay. radio show Here's until you have a cocktail. The, the, there you go. I was thinking we'd do a glass of wine, but the Mai Tai's better. Yeah. Uh, we, we do a little pregame before the show. All right, I can't choose. Uh, well, we got to know you better before the show. Now, I want to, I, I, going back to my question, um, first off, this is a tough gig. What made you decide, I'm going to run for supervisor? You have a career. We'll talk about that. But uh, how did that decision come about? How did we begin? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, it, it became, I had to do it. It had to be done. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> um, Were you pushed? Was somebody saying, no, no, no. Let's, let's, let's do this? But I was asked. You were asked, to do okay. It. And I think very early on, there were events that happened, and a lot of people felt left out with the current administration, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people were really upset about that. And I grew up in a Swiss family where my, you know, I was like five years old and my aunties. A Swiss family, you said? Yeah, my, my dad's Swiss and my mom's Hawaiian. Huh. So you're the, second, you're the second Swiss. It's, it's, it's a good, did they, did it, they meet in hang Hawaii on. or Switzerland? Or pizza in my heart. You're the, oh, you're, the, you're, the, you're the second <laughs> Swiss person I've talked to you today. No way. Yep. Huh. You know, for, you know, you know who else is Swiss? Who? Pastor Rene Schlepper. Get out of here! Really? From Twin Lakes Church. Who? Huh? You don't know Pastor Rene? No. Twin Pastor Rene was Man of the Year. Yeah, he's he amazing. is very well known. Yeah. Man, very well known. Well, he's he's in the area. But I know where Twin Lakes is. I yeah, just he's the pa he's the lead he's and the lead pastor there. He's are, you a are you a church going fellow? I go there once in a while. Isn't what he has to say? Pastor Rene is chicken to do my Mary off. I got you, bro. <laughs> He's, he's done like, he's officiated probably a thousand weddings. Oh, wow. I've done three, but I think I can give him a run for the money. Okay. So, Pastor <laughs> Rene, yeah. I'm coming oh, for you. I'm coming, yeah, right? And I'm cheaper. <laughs> a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. And, and quicker. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming but for you. But when you show up. Uh, so, yeah. what was your mindset to say, I'm running for District 1? I'm going to make a change. How did that come about? I mean, I know you wanted to, uh, you, you thought that some people were cheated out, but, or, or whatever it was that happened. Right. But uh, my, my, my thought pattern is thinking about you doing it is what was the biggest thing that made you step over the edge? 
Uh, you know, I think there were a lot of things that were that moved forward, right? So I was attending a lot of meetings. I was hearing from different people that their needs were not being met, that they were not being listened to. They were messing with my senior citizens, with my kids. And I just had heard from so many people. And I had a, there were a lot of people who said, look, someone's got to run. And so I met with about six different people to talk about that. Six different people who said, I am thinking about running. And after meeting individually with all these different people and hearing a lot of people ask me to run, I kind of made that commitment early on. I think it was in January that I officially made the commitment. Of this year? Uh, I think Last so. I, yeah. I'm trying to remember back yeah. the exact, like, when, okay, now I'm going to put the pedal to the metal and fully commit. To can, I, can, I, can I ask you a, a, my question? My first question to you would be, is that, can you tell me six things... Six. Uh oh. The first one's, gonna be, the first one's gonna be actually the hardest. <laughs> number one. Six number one, what is your favorite Marianne's ice cream oh, flavor? You guys always ask this question. Uh, okay. So I have a question. Why do you ask Marianne's and not like Mission Hill? It's on his way home. Penny. He stopped because by there all the time. The local, they, local, they, they call local, him by first name. Local company. Okay. I love their ice cream, they've been around forever. Yeah. Look well, at his waist. So you know the owner. <laughs> Let's <laughs> check out your waist, bro. <laughs> My waist isn't pretty. Yeah, right you're now. you're hiding behind the <laughs> I like Mary Ann's ice cream too. <laughs> I'm hiding here too. Okay, uh, so favorite flavor? So I got to meet the owner of Mary Ann's, who's next door neighbors to my friend, and we got to try a flavor that is not on. Oh! Breaking news, everybody! <laughs> Breaking news! <laughs> and, and, and what is what? <laughs> so there were two. It was like raspberry tequila. Yes, there was alcohol oh. in it. Oh! And blackberry rum. Or oh something yeah, like raspberry that. tequila. And I'll take that. It was the blackberry the rum in there too. Yeah, exactly the rum. Okay, is that in the like, the twenty one and over section? Yes. Down there? Yeah. So okay. it ends up that they don't sell it at the shops. No. They like make it for another place oh, wow. outside. Oh. So I've got to write to them, say something. You got to change that. I'm Mary like, Ann's. dude, you got to bring this in. Okay, okay so let's talk about five things politically you want to talk about tonight. Oh, I think I sent you guys a text. I got it. I got it right here. <laughs> gotta gotta yeah, we're going to go straight down the list. I got this. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Um, the first one is pg and &E. And then uh, PG &E and yeah, PG &E. Let's start with that. That's, yeah, so you, it, you know, a, a lot of people are really upset about PG &E. But they do, but they seem to be up. You're up. You're up against a giant. It's like it's like David and Goliath, but Goliath is going to win this time. Yeah, I mean the interesting thing in PG and E, the reason why it's so important is it deals directly with disaster preparedness, and the reason why that's important is because PG and E is like a top igniter. Of mm -hmm. Oh, for forest sure. fires, yeah, absolutely. Right. right in our mm -hmm. state, in our Northern California, um, and I think what's really important to know about that is actually the county supervisor has a lot of power to help deal with something called the franchise agreement, and the franchise agreement that we have with PG&E yeah. is something that was uh, signed in 1955. So we haven't re we haven't revisited this agreement since 1955. Well, you know what? Another thing about PG&E is recently I've personally I saw a gigantic increase in my bill mm -hmm. and I feel for anyone on a fixed income right now with the increases that everyone is seeing with their PG&E bill right now direct result of their payouts from fire yes yes I, I mean they have to make it up somehow right so we get to pay we get to pay for their mistakes wow. I, I, I think the other thing that people don't realize with this franchise agreement is that in in the agreement, it says that if they're not meeting the needs and if they're not um, doing things that are safe, we can actually negotiate that and change it. And one of the things that they don't do, so the second largest um, electrical, um, what's called municipal right. Uh, right. organization right. in the state is called Southern California Edison. Mm -hmm. It's the seven, second largest. And they have implemented all of these very advanced technologies. Um, for example, they can stop the power immediately. They have a way to track it, high level technology. The other thing that they do is they do triple insulation of their wires. So undergrounding is great on the flatlands. It should have done that from the very get go. It works great, but mm -hmm. it, where it doesn't work is when you get into the mountains. When you start to get into areas that are steep and inclined, right. It's undergrounding is really expensive, right. and the maintenance over time is really expensive. Right. So our quickest, fastest way of addressing this issue is to do triple insulated wires. 
right now what we have are bare wires. Why mm. do you think we have such a uh, you know this problem yeah. with mm. fire with fire yeah. mm -hmm. because the wires are are bare, and they're moving from copper to zinc, which in this salty air, arcs. Mm -hmm. Guess it what? Happened in my house. Fire. Oh. Yeah, my house had half the power went out, and it turned out my drop line had corroded from being next to the beach. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Surprise. Yeah. 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 yeah, so here we have a problem where our our electrical um, power company doesn't take more cheaper, easier, faster advances right. that are done already with another... Right. So you'd like to see them um, shift, if they're not going to go underground, to a, a triple insulated cable. Yeah, or absolutely. That would insulate, if it dropped to the ground, igniting a fire. Yeah, or even or hits... Out. hits trees right then what they've shown is all those areas that they've done it in southern california no longer ignite right they don't have the ignition problem and so you don't have to spend that extra money ripping right. out as many trees mm -hmm. as well so there's you know multiple reasons why you would want to do that it seems like um they're struggling to keep up a little bit mm -hmm. and they're uh they've let it go so long that mm -hmm. now it's to a point where they're struggling to fix a lot of these problems right and I've noticed that they're doing a uh, propaganda campaign mm -hmm. of showing them bearing cables on their commercials and yeah. trying to make an effort to win back the public is it working with PG&E do you think oh, I mean they're putting all their eggs in the undergrounding basket again because of the expenses it's going to take a lot longer to actually catch up and do what they could do in half the time right. addressing right. this easier issue so I'm going to move along here. You ready? Oh, okay. Yes. Go into the next thing. Um, I, I have a disaster <laughs> preparedness. Is that part of the PG&E? Uh, yeah, I think disaster preparedness deals with a lot of different things. First of all, prevention, right? So prevent ignition, get people in places so that they're not, uh, you know, get people to actually create fire-wise communities, mm -hmm. fire hardening so that they're preventing ignition. as. If something ignites, right. then it's not going to spread rapidly. Um, what they do, um, a gentleman named Larry Lop at the summit started the shady fuel break. So what you're doing is you're taking the brush up to a certain level. So if there's ignition, it doesn't spread as quickly as well. Mm -hmm. um, so disaster preparedness is, I see it as multifold because I, you know, I have family in, in Maui, mm -hmm. near Lahaina. And what happened there? could happen here right right you right, get a firestorm sure. you get a hot enough fire and you we've got over 250,000 people in this county county and in our district alone over 55,000 so imagine a firestorm and everyone trying to escape all at the same time well those winds we had like a week and a half ago or a week ago mm -hmm. if, if, if that would that wind would have come during summer and we would have had a uh, potential fire I, I just was terrifying to think yeah. of the damage and that's that's basically what happened in Maui it seems like it was a yeah. uh, uh, Maui Power or whatever their power deal was that did that. Yeah. No, she, she, she's uh, no, she's prepared. Okay, so <laughs> oh, we um, can't see about, him can though. We talk about, can we talk about the mm. trail and the rail? That's not on her list. Well, so on my are list. you done with disaster preparedness? Well, no, no, it's on well, my list. We we're can talk Is the rail trail oh, transportation? I, uh, that is on. I want to know. I want to know. Yeah, I wanna, yeah. In my lifetime, <laughs> in my lifetime, I'm old. I said it made another birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Oh, By the way, last week was fun. If you haven't Wait, seen you had that a show, last week? yeah, last week oh, on the show, fun. we did a birthday uh, show for Neil. <laughs> and it was a great it was a great time. That was fun. Oh, we had a Happy party. birthday again. Um, Am I going to ride a train in my lifetime here in Santa Cruz County? It is absolutely possible. And in fact, in April, I went to a meeting, and basically the state of California that has been giving us money, helping us, they helped us buy that corridor, that rail corridor. They're the ones that gave us the money to buy the rail Which corridor. Which rail corridor is that? Like, from when to where? It goes from Davenport to, to Washington. Okay, all right. Um, they gave us money, and basically in this meeting, they said... How much did they give you, you know? $600 million? Twelve. It was, I think it was 12 It, was, no, no, it that's cost that's 14 cost. million, right, right, right. and I think that's, they gave us $11 right. million or something. Okay. I should know that, but see, this is what happens when you um, <laughs> take yeah. a step. But to answer your question, yeah. what they said in that meeting, I actually have the, the thing here so you guys can see it, is that... Love it. Um, Prepared. Prepared. In t within 10 years, we can have our rail going. Within 10 years, we can have our system. And the reason why that's so important is it actually addresses major issues around our environment. It is the number one... Um, way that the state is trying to address our transportation, our climate issues through transportation. So it's huge because transportation is like 70% of 
of the greenhouse gases that we produce in this county. Right. So if we have really smart ways of getting around and public transportation is one, is, has always been, and rail has always been, the most energy efficient and the most um, environmentally smart way. To I mean, T.C. Herbie said this before. I grew up in, re, with trains. You in, did. Being yeah. in England, yeah, right? Yeah. Like in England, I go to Brighton Station, my Brighton to Victoria Station in London. I catch the two to where I was going, and a taxi where my end game was, my end result was. Here, we just seem to be have a train that's going to like the boardwalk in Watsonville, but there's no end game. There is an end game. What, can you tell me what, the, what is the end game? Absolutely. So that's Thank part you. of the state rail network. So from, from you know, Watsonville, of course, people can get to work in Santa Cruz. That's a big deal. Yeah. But from Watsonville, you go to Pajaro. And from Pajaro, Monterey is already building their whole rail system from okay. Monterey to Pajaro. So that means we can go from here to Monterey. But from Pajaro, you can also go to Salinas. But what San about the people Jose, going north San from here? Like, 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 you see, I get up on Freedom every day. It's a freaking, it's, it's a gridlock. Freedom Boulevard. You know, Freedom Boulevard, fucking yeah. gridlock, excuse my French. Uh, you know, what about, you know, this direction from here on downtown Santa Cruz? We talked about TC, about, you know, getting to UCSC. Or then, Dominican Hospital. Or Dominican mm-hmm. Hospital. Yeah, that's but a big all one. the ones that want to go over the hill. Yeah, so we have a... a a large percentage of our workers that actually work locally and yeah. tra- transfer locally. And, and we have a lot of people, for example, a lot of nurses that come from Salinas, people that come from Salinas. And so that would offer people, Salinas, Watsonville, people that work locally to hop on a train and to very easily get to downtown. If you work at Dominican, we would have a shuttle. You would have a shuttle that takes you from a, a train stop to the shuttle. Huh. Um, and for those people who likes, like biking, you can take your bike. So on a, on a nice weather day, you come from Salinas, you can take your bike on the train, take it up to the stop that goes to, closest to Dominican, hop off and head to Dominican. You know, it's funny. I had a, saw a friend of mine say that um, everyone who's pro-train hopes that somebody else takes the train. You know, it's like a lot of the people who are super pro-train aren't the people who are going to take it. But my father, interesting fact, he was responsible for getting the train corridor from Santa Rosa to San Francisco. Nice. Very, very prominent commuter, commuter route. They lost $91 million last year. Yeah, but they're now starting to, to catch back up, right? Cause of the I don't corridor. know if they are or not. All I know is they lost $91 million. Is that tax-based? Who pays the, their loss? Because it's a, I don't know. That's my question. Is If the train doesn't make money... Who is responsible? It's a good question, but let me ask you this question. Who pays for the highway? There's no fees when you get on there, and so that means we are paying sure. billions well, of dollars. Sure. state of California does. Right. I mean, I, I get that. Billions but, of but, dollars to subsidize um, the, highway the highway supports far more commuters than a rail corridor. Because we don't have a good rail corridor. They didn't plan it. Like Neil says, when yeah. he was a kid, yeah. well, they, they planned did. it a hundred years ago. We actually did. We did freight. Are they trying to put, no, infra- no, no, are they trying to put infrastructure into the town and into Santa Cruz now when they should have done you know, 50, 60, 70 years ago? Well, what I'm, what I'm referring to is that actually 70 years ago, we had amazing rail infrastructure. We were ahead of the world in our rail transit. Um, we had actually hubs like in L.A. We had rail that went here from over the hill. We had the key system. Um, we had systems that shoot some remaining on the East Coast, like in New Jersey and New York. But across the country, we were ahead of the world. And it was really this shift um, in, you're probably familiar with the redlining, and it was about the 50s that it started, that the automobile, tire, oh, absolutely. the sure. trucking, asphalt, mm-hmm. all these industries formed one of the most powerful lobbyist organizations in the country, and they systematically ripped out all these amazing systems True that. that we have. No, I do and agree. And at that time, then Europe literally took off and, and got ahead of us, and now they're so far ahead of us. I mean, the United States, like many things, was ahead of the game, and now and then we fell behind. In it'll, be, it'll be interesting to see because I think um, – we're going to need a lot more funding. We do, but the beauty of it is that right now, for example, the federal government has uh, p- uh, put in $64 billion towards rail. We've got um, a local thing called SC-125 is $4 billion. 
we've got TERSIP funds. And one of the things, because I can't remember all the specifics, um, but here if you look at this is the rail system that's proposed from Monterey. Yeah. And Monterey's already going forward with it, right? So they're doing it, and we've got the state rail network that's going to connect us throughout the state. And this kind of gives a breakdown of where that funding is coming from. What's happening now is that there's so much more money coming from all these resources, the state and the federal government, to implement rail, as I said, because it's a number one priority. Like the Caltran, Caltran up over the hill in San Francisco, you got two, you got the one, you got, you got two tracks, right? One going this way, one going that way. Totally. We only have one. Yeah, 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 yeah. How's that work? How does that work? work? Yeah. I, mean, I don't understand yeah. how you, you get take trade breaks. Off. Pull yeah. off. They pull off, or <laughs> yeah, they, they pull, pull off. over. Yeah, totally. It's called. They're called sidings. You probably have heard of these. Mm. So actually, single track trains are very common throughout the world. It's not unusual. And what you have to have are sidings placed every so often, and then that allows. Ad and it's seamless. So it's not like the train actually has to stop. What happens is they time it so that um, one train pulls out as the other comes through, and then it goes past. And so th this is what they're doing right now with the engineering to determine how many sightings, what's called the headways, like does your train come every 15 minutes, every 30 minutes. Ideally, you want it to come every 15 to 20 minutes to make it more usable. Okay. In your opinion, how long until it happens? What do you think? Um, if we have someone that will champion rail, so the state of California is there ready to put money into the system. They've already done it in Monterey, and Monterey isn't even proposed to have their rail before ours. Ours, like I said, within 10 years. We can have our rail in 10 years. We just need a champion who's willing to do the work. Um, Neil, let's so make sure we didn't miss something here. We're not, no, done, I like we're not done yet. Lonnie, you did, you did really good with the rail question. So go. I wanted you to go over there and okay. have a sip on the Mai Tai. Suck, suck the whole thing down. Okay. I got the three ladies over here that will talk about their uh, okay. painting thing. You took a little break. Okay, I'll take <laughs> a break. A good job. This, is a, this is a commercial break. Commercial, commercial break. break. <laughs> and it was not commercial break to get a Mai Tai. Okay, <laughs> ladies, come on up here. What we got going on? Okay, so tomorrow, hang on, Neil. Hang on, TC. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a picture of your ass. <laughs> it looks like, well, I don't know. That's your not ass. ass. No, that is. That's your ass. Okay. <laughs> Next okay. up. So, okay, first real off. Quick, um, quick, um, this is happening tomorrow. Yes. Right yes. here in yes. Pleasure Valentine's Point. Valentine's Day. Dirt Valentine's Farm. Valentine's Day pop up. And 37th. 37th and East Cliff. Yeah, it's right there. Five. You yeah. can't miss it. The famous yeah, dirt farm. Yeah. The, the three of you and, and we have other people coming too. We have it. No, DJ. you're coming, right? The DJ. We have a DJ. <laughs> Neil wants to get Neil. Yeah. He Neil. wants me to give him a Neil. butt print for Neil. Valentine's Neil. Day. So, um, so what are we doing here? <laughs> We've There's a butt print. Hang on. There it is. Yeah. There it is. That's like Michigan. That's not a butt print. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Nicole. That's not a butt print. That's like Michigan. <laughs> That's not a butt print. That's a sit on it print. It's the whole thing. That's okay. like Michigan. That's like Michigan. <laughs> so, so you start out with a canvas that's, that's blank, and we've done oh. intentions on this. Some of them love, passion. So they're prepared already? Right. Prepared, prepared. Canvases mm -hmm. that we've done. We've each done. So you just go up there, and you can, if you want to, you can just paint your, paint your boots. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so you, you paint it. You paint yep. it. Like or, either... Or you Lonnie, can paint it and you Lonnie's press going it. out the back door. <laughs> She's like, I'm out here. Okay. So you paint it and then you press it. It's pressed. You paint it. Can a significant it? other who's put the, the paint on? Who's those? Yes. yes. Well, okay, so you can bring a friend. Yes. And they yes. can paint it up. Yes. So it's yes. a team effort. And then you can paint. Yes. She did mine. Yeah. I love that. So, so it can, can be done. You. We yeah, could we help, which is really cool, because when someone paints you, man, it feels good. Yeah, hit good. him. First off, yeah. And then, <laughs> hey, and honey, then, and then you take I the canvas, I promise I won't be and there. you press it on. <laughs> yes. My, my, like, my wow. wife's watching right now. I won't be there, I promise. We're going to Vegas. <laughs> She's coming. She's no, coming to us. Yeah. No, She's you coming to us. Oh, you. you see. Okay. Well, yeah. You can make it home. Hang on. You going to Vegas tomorrow? <laughs> so what am I expressing? You should you be in the hotel room with your, with your, your painting of your ass. Yeah. No, you, you can take it with Okay, you. so maybe I'll stop by. What time does it start? Two. Two. Two o'clock? That's yeah, pretty nice. Fine. Rain or shine. Yeah. Rain or shine. Yeah. Yeah. We have, a, we have a tent. and this She's will be... watching right now. <laughs> no, hang on. But this hang is on, hang on. Mona, would you like a picture of your husband's butt? No. No, no. <laughs> no he wants a picture like this. No. What? She's got great... Hang on, hang on. What? What? You, you can do a combo. You can do a combo. And the delta. And then so how strong he is. And it can be your couple experience together about... Do you guys sell a home test kit of this? Can we take it? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that, that's yeah. up my alley, right? Yeah. You can do the window yeah. story. Yeah. We were just talking this yeah. up, but then, you know, across the street. Yeah. So the we ended up before we yeah. even got to the podcast. Someone took a home kit home. 
Yeah. TC, yeah, no one? Yeah. Okay. He took yeah. How, How much? How much? TC, what's 40. TC? 40, 40 bucks. 40 bucks. 40. You need a lot of that Marion's ice cream with tequila in it. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Something like that. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh, I know. I can, right. I can feel... I can feel her like, you're not going, TC. <laughs> um, but... For those who but she are, knows I drag you into all kinds of I shit. Do, I do. I do. Oh my gosh! If you guys could go back and well, check the shows, you'll see every embarrassing like, moment. And, of my oh, life. and then we have acrylic pens that you can actually write. So you can write. I love you. Some poetry, TC. Okay, yeah. so so yeah. this is your Valentine's Day. Card. This is um, yeah. Yeah. so that lasts forever. Neil, Neil, forever. these these I think are breasts. And did somebody put some white? Paint on there, just, just a, a little, little loop, little, 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 little dollop, little, little yeah. dollop on each one. <laughs> someone, yeah. lover may have. someone, someone. This guy over here. <laughs> yeah, over here. Okay, was that Did whipped like cream or paint? Ball. What was it's that? Really paint. It was that's really it. paint. I tell you what. I know Lonnie's in. Lonnie's in. Lonnie's in. That's nice. Lonnie's in. She's coming. Okay, so. Tomorrow, yeah. tomorrow the dirt farm at Pleasure Point yeah, and the 38th Avenue, right there, or 37. Yeah, 37. Yeah. yeah. Two to five. Two to five. Yeah. Rain or shine, rain or shine. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. Mother Nature has her own plans. Take so it home with you. With do it with us. Or yeah. we do I, it with you. Like, I'm you telling you, you're on to something. Do this it is with amazing. your friends. Yeah. Do it for yeah. your baby. Mm -hmm. Do it with it can your be for kids, pregnant women, anybody. Hand prints. It doesn't have to be like intimate body parts. You can print anything. Jack O'Neill's dirt prom. Well, I just feel like this is a cool Valentine's Day gift. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. It's from, the, it's from the heart. It's yep, yep. A, it, I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's yep. from the heart, and uh, it's forty bucks. Is that we said. Yep. yep. Forty yep. bucks, and yep. that includes the paint and everything. The paint and the canvas. The whole experience. Mine would say. Yeah. Mine, yeah. Mine, mine would say. Mine would say this. I'm saying the artist. Hang on, hang on, TC. Nice. So what mine would say. Done. So mine would say. I kissed you once, but now it's all over. <laughs> well, I did make an intention that was... No. Or does it say, or does it say don't true. kiss and tell? Like that. That's a double-sided okay. meaning. Okay, so you have to print like 12 of them and hand them out no, to all 12? No, that's double meaning. Double-sided meaning. <laughs> He's a player. Okay, girls, you done? Like, yeah. yeah, I'll okay. be that. Be there. See you well, tomorrow. Okay, see okay tomorrow. so tomorrow at the Dirt Farm, yeah. Yeah. bring 40 yeah. bucks. Yeah. Where's the Dirt Farm? Um, yeah. and there's, so, oh, it can be cash, Venmo, wipes to get the paint off. Oh, shit, yeah. We have these things called art wipes. They're the best thing ever. So you, you can, can we'll wipe see. it off. Yeah, so yeah. that's going to be easy. You put and a barrier have, cream on so, is it kind so of, it doesn't stick to your body. Okay, that's good to you know. The, is it kind of private? Because like, yeah. somebody should have, have, have a 15 foot hexagon <laughs> tent. Okay, and can a guy like drop drawer and do it? Yeah, that's yeah. Okay? if he wants to. Just, yeah, okay. it's your that's private. Okay. It's your okay. private. All right. However so. you want to do that. Game you wanna, on. Game no, no, on. this is it. You want to get a helicopter? Not <laughs> all you. And, and okay. you can bring an artist in with you if okay, so, you want to. Okay, so you obviously, uh, it's not your first this helicopter, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not actually, the first helicopter for this three. Okay. Drop drawer. I'm going to say. I'm going to the helicopter. I am not allowed to go, but if you want to go guys and gals yeah tomorrow Don't be shy. Don't all be shy. afternoon you will be yeah. there yeah. rain or shine Too 40 high. bucks get it done yep uh -huh. um, and that's the get in get on get out that is a great valentine get, get, well yeah. get, get in get on get, get out okay, okay. okay. I love okay. It. Yeah. Oh gosh! See you guys. Hey, that's Thank awesome. You so much. Yeah, Thank you I hope so tomorrow much. is a Thank total you. success. Thank you. Yeah, I hope yeah. it works Thank out you. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. We'll see you in the building. Yes. Yeah, that's Thank awesome. You. Okay, so just a little wrap up on that. Head down to the dirt farm right here in Pleasure Point tomorrow all afternoon. You can uh, you can um, rub some paint on any part of you. Put it on a canvas. It's outside. Yeah, it's great. It's it, they have easy up tents, so if the weather's a little rough. And it's and you private. Want a private. Oh, we're doing a helicopter. You know, you might want I've, I've never <laughs> helicoptered once in my life. I don't. Your, mic, yeah. your wife might appreciate a little helicopter action. I'll, I'll ask her when I get home because for sure she's watching. She's going to be like, what's up with the helicopter? Sheesh. You could do an in home version. <laughs> What? She could manage the situation. <laughs> the temperature got a little hot here for a second. I was like, <laughs> sheesh, it's got a little warm. What's he no, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> I'm like, I ain't going. See, okay. She um, had no idea you were getting. I get into more shit. <laughs> first off, he did not warn me about that. He always does this. He like, <laughs> one time when we were actually on the radio, I was like, who's on? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. So I told my wife, we got a band on tonight, I think. He did a, a, a twenty burlesque girl show. Burlesque. Oh, okay, first off, <laughs> who does burlesque on the radio? 
We were not even videoing it. We didn't live stream it. My wife, I get home at night and I'm like, oh, hon, it wasn't a band. <laughs> Neil brought the burlesque girls. Um, safe streets. Let's let's oh. jump back into our Did discussion. Did you see the video with Safe Streets? Yes, that was awesome. Yeah, I thought it was great. We need more of we you need guys to do more of that. doing yeah. Safe Streets videos and commercials. we just need to be safer. Period. In well, my I, opinion, you know, I think it, it's it's two. It's a few things. It's just like it's about awareness and it's about respecting each other. Because we every third day we have someone either kit or killed or hospitalized because they get hit with a car walking across the street, pedestrians, people biking. Yeah. And I know when I used to work over the hill, I was like pedal to the metal. I drove super fast. I was on 17. That was my little race track. And I realized when I started coaching kids, because I coached mountain biking for seven years, and we took them on the street. And it was like, oh, my God, I need to slow down. Right. It was a it was a like a reality check. Yeah. And and then taking kids out between now and before COVID, it has gotten so much worse. Well look at you, so you talk to yourself did I tell you you worked at you worked at your store yesterday. Yeah. You saw eighteen girls were on electric bikes. Eighteen girls on electric bikes and I think there was four guys. Uh oh. No yeah. helmets. Um uh, well, they usually hang them on the handlebar. Um they take the parents they take it to satisfy the parents and they kinda hang on the handlebar. But you know, it's I'll, I'll circle back to the train. When we started talking about trains, and I, I, I do live on the corridor. My house, my fence falls and lands on train tracks. Um, I don't think we really understood the potential of the electric bike transportation sure. uh, potential. Yeah. Because um, they honestly go faster than the train. You they know? can. Yeah. Depending on how fast your train is going. Yeah. Well, I, the, the <laughs> train go like can't, thirty miles it, an yeah, hour. Yeah, but I don't think the yeah. the quarter it can't really allow. A, a, I don't think to haul ass if you're gonna have a trail next to it. Right. So when you go in town, you have to keep it a safe it's speed. You're not going speed. fifty or sixty right. miles yeah, an hour. Yeah. Right. S- similar to like you said. I mean, I say at every intersection, you're gonna have bars coming down. And every time a person on an e-bike is going to cross that street, they're going to have to either press that button. Mm-hmm. Right. To, Crossing guard. To cross right. guard. Or they're going to have to like, oh, I'm going to just go. Right. And I feel like we sort of are just scratching the potential of that uh, style of transportation because currently we see two or three humans on one mm-hmm. that aren't really designed for it. But they will be designed for it. There will be designs for families yeah, to get on totally. some sort of transportation like that. And I love it to go shopping. Right. No, you I absolutely agree. You go and get agree. all your groceries. You don't have to jump in your like mega car to get a dozen eggs. When they first started talking about changing the corridor, whether it was going to be trains or bikes, I, I always say this on the show and I have a million times. I always had a dream of a roll-up garage door on my fence with a rack of two-wheeled or three-wheeled or four-wheeled electric vehicles nice. that I could zip out on. And take my vehicle off the road. Yeah. Because currently at my house, anywhere I go, I pretty much have to drive. So I can't either carry it or, you know what I mean? Like, like it's a, we're, we're currently set up as a driving sort of, because like you say, it's not really safe to ride bikes in Santa Cruz. It we're trying. Be, and we'll make that oh, make I mean, that on 41st, totally. we have a lot more green paint on the road right now. So yeah. So there is a change yeah. to create more awareness. But my, my, my concern in the future will be, um, I won't be able to do that because there's going to be a train in front of my fence you mm. know like how i cross it or how i could get out onto that to go onto the yeah train. i don't know yeah, which side of the corridor the train's gonna be on yeah. so i'm a little concerned about that but whatever happens out there on the corridor we'll see mm-hmm. we don't know no i mean we we, you, right, we can all hope but we really don't know if the the state or federal is going to kick in the money or what's going to happen oh but the, you know the, again the reason why they gave us the money in the first place to buy the corridor was very specific and we've actually had officials come and give speeches about this like, that's the only I way could we could buy video. it though the only way to buy it was to keep rail on it right I mean that was the whole yeah. reason why mm-hmm. initially they sold it to us they're like we're selling this to you because we want you to do passenger rail and we voted on it with Proposition 116 we've actually been paying out the pocket right. for the taxes of Proposition right. 116 <clears throat> I have the document here that shows Santa Cruz voted for Proposition 116 mm-hmm. to pay for that yeah. And then it wasn't until um, 2014 that we implemented the Monterey Bay Sanctuary Scenic Trail, which was the master plan to put in the trail beside the rail. Right. And, you know, I'm a cyclist. I want to bike as much as I can, but not everyone has that opportunity, right? So there's a lot of people who really want to be able to use that corridor but can't bike. Right. And so they want to be able to have a rail access. Is your district uh, 
part of what's going on downtown and what's going on and what's being built downtown? No. It's not, no, huh? Yeah, it's not, yeah I think we talked about that's that. city, that's right? That's, that's, city. that's the third district. Third, third district, district, yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, wasn't sure. There they have a city council and a mayor, and, okay. they're, and they're the ones that work on Right, on I wasn't sure. That. Okay. What else we talk yeah. about, TC? What's your notes? Oh, so? I got it. I, uh, we do. Your notes? I, yeah, your notes? Well, I just wanted to say a point about the rail is that for me personally, yeah. I have these visions of biking all the way to Monterey. Now, mm -hmm. like I said, I'm totally mm -hmm. out of shape now, but biking all the way to Monterey, having lunch, having a couple drinks, and then taking the rail back. I think that would be real fun and when I was taking kids out mountain biking we have access along that rail to Aptos, Nassim Marks as well as Wilder mm -hmm. so you can get on that rail I imagine taking kids on the rail to go to all these different parks and you can take them out on the bikes and then be right on the trail it's just such an ideal situation yeah it's crazy I had a friend of mine who um, they went to all the way to Seaside to go to the skate park and uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the boys called up and they were like hey we're going to Seaside when they got there, they had two 12-year-olds who rode their electric bikes from Santa Cruz to Seaside. And they actually got on Highway 1 at Moss oh, Landing. They were on the highway. Yeah. Their parents had no idea oh my God. that they that's rode illegal. their bikes all the way to Seaside. Yeah. Right. That's why yeah. we have to make sure that they have access. Okay. Question yes. for you. Question. Sidebar. Yeah. It's torrential raining on the dirt car tomorrow. Can they do it outside here? She's going to ask you. Um, wow. Day. Okay. That's a great idea. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, oh, Florida, go for well, it, 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 is it... I, we would still have a private... Oh, I was going to say. Yeah, I might get arrested. That's going to be a show. Yeah. Oh, the DJ too? Um, uh, we will, uh, uh, I'm going to take a sidebar. I'll give you my number, but that's Perfect. sidebar. Perfect. Neil, jump in. <laughs> jump in. Where, where was Perfect. it? Uh, we were talking thank you about for you, thank the you for kids. All you, that you know, it shows all over the map, right? Yeah. What were we talking about? Seaside. The kids were taking their bikes to Seaside. Oh, I know. From, from, San, from On Santa Cruz. Right. Which is really crazy. crazy. Right. It's just, yeah, that's not good. Yeah. Well, we want to make the streets safer, and we also want to work with kids so that, that they have really right. good... You know, I've had two friends that would be dead today if they weren't wearing their helmets. Yeah. So... Um, Time for me to make another video, safe streets, 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 streets video. Totally, totally. You know, and speaking of the streets... Make it cool to wear helmets. Yeah. So, like, my son, when he was young, I'd say, you can't go outside with your, without your helmet. If I see you without your helmet, you're not riding. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's an opportunity... And then now, if he sees me go without my helmet, just, just to go a couple blocks, he's like, Mom, you need to wear your helmet. <laughs> the streets are bad here, right? Do we, do we have a plan as far as dealing yeah. with the potholes? And, and currently, we're digging up every single damn street in yeah, Santa Cruz yes. County. Yeah, it seems yeah. like we're digging up everything. I've never seen anything like it. Where It's really hard because of the Thanks, amount of money that we have coming in for yeah. dealing with a lot of these things. And you guys might have heard of Measure K. Measure K mm -hmm. coming up. So Measure K, the entire, and I've endorsed Measure K, the entire county will vote on Measure K, but the funds from Measure K um, will be taxed in unincorporated. So the tax rate will go from nine to nine and a half cents. Sales tax? Sales tax. Four? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the kinds of things that we're looking to put that for would be the roads. And even though right now the, they had a resolution that said, oh, they'd like to put 10% towards the roads, I'd like to push for more of that so we have a steady income of money that's really dedicated towards yeah. the roads. So we have roads that go all the way up to Summit in our district, right? Mm. And they're in really bad shape. They're in bad shape. Roads it's are bad, bad, shape. Bad, they're yeah. bad shape right here. Right I live two blocks from here. Our, my road in front of my house, is a, it looks like an alligator skin <clears> right now. It do, is insane. Do you guys poll as far as far as do you guys poll as far or do you poll as far as trying to figure out where you are on the race? Or? No, the polling is really expensive. Oh, is it expensive? We're not polling. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a do you have a phone a friend? Is there somebody that you when? I mean, I, if you're discouraged or encouraged, is there somebody that you're calling hmm. that's your phone a friend? That's a good question. I have I have good friends who who are kind and support me. Is there one you want to give thanks to for that it helps you out? Is oh, there there's somebody? so many. I mean... One special one? Christy, Tina, Martha. Just speak up. A lot of good people. Well, Victoria. Victoria, thank you. Jeremiah. Well, it's important to give them not only the um, recognition, but the, the thanking them for helping out. I couldn't do this. You can't them. do it alone. Mm -hmm. No. I could not do this. Who are the people... Some, some, of, the, some of the people who have endorsed you are... Well, uh, let's look. <laughs> we have a nice list here. Oh, we have a look. <laughs> let's yeah. look. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
Congressman Sam Farr, yeah. Senator Bill Monning, Sam, uh, sorry, Fred Keeley, uh, Mark Stone. Uh, we've got some major organizations, um, Democratic Women's Club, Democratic Central Committee. I think what, um, to me, is really important is our unions. I've got 10 unions that oh. are endorsing me, and the yeah. reason why that's important so, is we need to empower our working class community members so that they can actually afford to live uh -huh. and work here. Where they work here, they live here, they should be able to afford. Sorry. Well, um, you're, you're a teacher, correct? Are um, you, I taught. Are you I currently taught, teaching right now or no? No, no, no. Okay. I taught college for about six years. Okay. What did you teach? Physiology, nutrition, All right. biology. Oh. She's a scientist. I'm a scientist. Oh, you're a scientist. I'm a mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to be a mad scientist to get into politics. You're a mad scientist so. to be on this radio show, too. Yeah. Um, the hardest part of being <clears throat> in politics is? Like, what's what's been your, like, the hardest part? I think what you said earlier is it's running a marathon, and that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. And I've run there. I used to be a triathlete. So yeah. that last five miles is really hard. Have you hit the wall yet? I'm this week. It's yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel it. I feel like. Have you this. cried yet? No. Not yet? No. Okay. No. Yeah, so it's not. You haven't hit the wall yet. Well, I don't know. I'm not. I, this is a bummer. I think I'd feel better if I, if I did. <laughs> I think I would feel better if I did. Um, so I asked you earlier. This is a, a bit of a lifelong commitment for you to give back and be a community uh, leader. You, this is something you're you're in for the long haul. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's it's about just being with the community, right? A lot of people know me because of I tell people I just I'm moving all the time yeah. to try to do whatever I can, and so people will call me and they'll say, "Lonnie, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do this?" And I'll be like, "If I can, I try to do it." Can you answer what are you what are you what are you tackling from day to day that you think maybe your the man is not tackling? What's something that that's going to uh, that you're spending some time on that makes going to make a difference that mm. he's not? So you're talking in terms of addressing the community. Yeah. I mean, I think the no a big difference between us is that I am rooted in listening to people's needs, and that means more than just like a slice of our community. And you're talking about who's endorsing me. I'm endorsed by a number of um, educators, board members of the school yeah. boards, um, some fire board members, um, and a lot of seniors, because those are the people that were left behind. If, if you, if, can I throw a question? Yeah, if, if you know now what you know now, <laughs> right? If you know now what you know now, would you do you think you still be in the? Do you still be doing this? Do you still be in the race? Or are you like, what the heck am I doing this for? Yeah, you know, I ask myself, oh my God, what am I doing? What am I doing? And I'm like, it's it's for the right reasons. Okay. Yeah. I'm here for the for the reasons that we're talking about. People are left out of this conversation. People are not being heard. And people, that's what I hear over and over again. That's what I see over and over again. So I'm here for those reasons. Yeah. Still open for donations to the campaign? Yes, yeah. please. How do they do yes. it? <laughs> so if somebody's watching that says, yes, hey, we Lonnie, need, I, yes, I agree. Yes, we need donations. Yeah, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, well, you can go to the website, um, LonnieForSupervisor.org. And there you can see the address where you can either send a check or you can make a donation online. That would be awesome. Yeah. Really appreciate that. It's expensive to run a campaign. I think we should have publicly financed campaigns, by the way. It evens the playing field, uh -huh. so it's really about who the people are and what they're there for. It's not about like all the deep pockets. I I am so behind oh, campaign reform. Hmm. Get corporations out. Um, we don't need... Uh, I feel like it's almost corruption in what's going on in campaigns nowadays totally. and what well, they get away with. There's things that you're going to deal with that, that, that have not been dealt with for years, and then maybe they're impossible. Like, for example, you know, homelessness, right? That's a subject that we've not... We've, we've tackled that a million times, and, and it all comes and, down to money every time. Yeah, and I the mean... Word, the, and the word solution keeps popping up, and there has never not been a solution. Another thing is, I think, is affordable housing. Well, and they're you know? connected, because what's yeah. happening is a large percentage of the people falling into homelessness fall into homelessness because there isn't affordable housing. And it's a real problem here, and so it's very important that we carve out 
sectors of affordability, our country once actually poured in a lot more funding to subsidize housing across the country. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're, I want to say we're like 40% down from that, which is why you're really seeing this problem. The other thing I talk about is I call it the gaping wound of the systemic problem in this country. And that systemic problem is we talked about 45 years ago, corporations yeah. paid 80% or more of taxes. taxes. They gave back to society. Mm -hmm. They gave back. And they paid good wages. So you could be, I say, you could be pushing a broom. Your best job could be pushing a broom as a janitor and keeping this place beautiful. Mm -hmm. And you can make enough money to afford a house. Right. And you a know, car. the last uh, administration had a corporate tax break. I'm a corporation. I saved a lot of money. Mm -hmm. It I wasn't money that I necessarily needed to save. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was contributing as a corporation to helping. Um, I saved a bunch of money that was unnecessary. Why he, why that, why they saved corporations money? I don't get mm -hmm. because I can still have a nice life with my corporation paying what I feel like my corporation should pay mm -hmm. and, uh, contribute. But I don't understand why corporations pay no taxes. I, I think it's just There's a bizarre. lot of ways to, yeah, escape that. And then we also have shell organizations. Oh, and you could pay your taxes through Reno and Delaware yeah, and no, offshore. And, There's all and, kinds and, of and ways you know what? out and of here, Let's get back to it. The lobbyists are paying people to endorse those bills. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. That are, in, that are yeah. being paid by corporations. Yeah. Wow, what an evil cycle we live in. Yeah. Uh, way outside of the realm we're discussing here locally right now. Yeah. But it's a big problem it, of what's it is. going on. It is. And I say, you know, here what we're trying to deal with is putting Band-Aids on the gaping wound. The gaping wound is this underlying systemic issue that's really washing out the money and, you know, it's very top-heavy. At the same time that we're trying to throw Band-Aids on our problems here of homelessness, affordable housing, all these things that we're talking about, we really have to be working on these underlying systemic issues. It's one of the reasons why I really am close with the unions that they're supporting me, they're endorsing me, the unions that have endorsed me. Just got a teacher's union to endorse me today, got the news. Um, and that's really critical because we have to work together to change that system. Mm -hmm. It benefited people. At one time, the workers were the spine, the backbone of our country. Mm -hmm. And now that's just, we're now the middle class are paying for everything. Mm. Yeah. It's not, it's, so we have to shift that shift. If we're going to address our local issues without just throwing band-aids on this gaping wound, we have to go there. I told you earlier, I always say, Neil knows this, mm. the winners are the ones who try. Mm. And if you don't try to make a change, don't whine about it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you are have thrown your hat into this race, um, I congratulate you on that. I, I hope that it's a successful campaign, um, uh, that you, you, you have and a great you mindset, win, lose, or draw. You have a great mindset and the, the, know that because you tried, you're a winner. Thank you. Yeah. And, you're always uh, welcome back. Yeah. On, you're always welcome and, to come back on the show anytime. And Thank yeah, you. and we look forward to it because uh, you know it's. I just I I'm sick of complainers who don't want to contribute, and um, and I feel like if you really make a try and want to change to make life better for the people in this town, you're a winner. Thank you. And so, congrats to that. Best of luck. And it takes a village. It does. No. And, <laughs> it takes and, a bunch of people to make this happen. And, um, and, and, and I just want to congratulate you for throwing your hat in there and making an effort and trying to make our community better. Um, we might not agree on everything, but I agree mm -hmm. with you being here. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for this public service. Yeah, well, it's great. <laughs> getting and people I, out, watching, getting involved. We talked earlier about how it's really important to get young people involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is so critical mm -hmm. because... We've disempowered ourselves again as a country, right. well, getting uh, young people the, involved in their yeah, process. The town's, the town's age has gotten older. Yeah. No matter yes, what happens in this election, has gotten, yeah, yeah, way yeah. older. But, the, yeah. but no matter what happens in this election, when it's over, we want to have you back. Thank you. Um, just then to, I'll cry. Well, <laughs> but I, we're the other but, positive but, or negative. Well, well, the oh, thing is, we'll give you my time. We get, we'll get, get we'll, okay, we'll, we'll give you another <laughs> my time. <laughs> But to, just to kind of talk more about the race, yeah, you know, because I, I feel like that's a really interesting part, and we don't often circle back. We've been trying to circle back and take notes of what people promise they're going to do, mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. see if they can get things done they and circle and circle yeah. back to that mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. bit and, and what's going on in politics. Because it's easy to say you're going to do these things, yeah. but then yeah. to circle back and actually see if you did them. 
And um, and that I feel like that's an important part of politics because a lot of people forget yeah. what people are promising to to continue their uh, career in politics. So yeah, um, well, and I'm I'm a collaborator. Like that's my way of leadership as opposed to like top down. So you have top down leaders who are like, this is what I I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you what to do. I'm more like, look, we need to get together. We need to listen. We need to look at what needs to be done and how are we going to come up with these solutions together. And that builds bridges. That actually empowers us as a community, I think, That's awesome. to make things happen. Lolly, thank you, hon. Thank yeah. you so much. Good um, to you. Just so you guys know, Lolly Faulkner. He's in the house. Today. You said you're right. Irish? Is that uh, Hawaiian, there's a Hawaiian, Hawaiian and Hawaiian Swiss? But there's like Irish <laughs> yes. in the name, though, right? Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, the Hawaiian <laughs> Swiss. Um, right there. Uh, you have a website where they can come and support you if they need be. Yep, LonnieForSupervisor.org. I love that. Okay, right. well, we'll have you back on the show. Uh, Thank you so much. That you was a great show. Week, Thank you. Uh, next week, more coffees in that back. Oh, I love more having coffee. Ward Coffee. Is he bringing right. any of the kids? Bring the kids. Bring in the kids. I love that. Ward <laughs> Coffee, a legend in Thanks, Santa Cruz Thanks. surfing. Yeah. And uh, when and I was then, growing up. Have a good wow. Valentine's Day. You know? Thank you. Yeah, happy yeah. Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's um, Day, and I want to thank you for tuning in. T Fox, thanks for having us. We'll see you next Tuesday with Ward Coffee in the house.